if your nervous system is not used to things going well, expansion can feel just as uncomfortable as failure. And so when expansion is like, you know, pulling us up, it's also exposing all of those old unhealed wounds that we haven't given attention to before. Healing, recovery, like that takes a massive amount of energy. And depending on where you are, if you're more in the beginning stages of that journey, like being able to just get dressed and get out of bed, like that's, that's what we're celebrating right now. Hello, lady, and welcome back to the Styled for Life podcast. It's your girl, Katie, here, back with another banger. Today, honestly, is such a fire episode. These episodes, it's a guest episode, is my favorite type of episode where we get to go really deep and have some fun. So if you're new here, oh, welcome. As always, my goal is to inspire everyone around me to live their biggest, fullest lives by sharing the stories and mindset shifts and style solutions and body confidence tips that I'm gathering along the way and bringing other amazing women and guests onto the show to share their stories as well. So like I said, today's episode is a juicy one. The more I show up and podcast and the more I help women feel amazing in their bodies, I realize that my favorite thing to do is to go really, really, really deep because actually styling our bodies and getting dressed every day is actually a really, really deep practice. Stay with me. But at the same time, I think my gift is to make it fun. So it's like we get to go really, really deep and have the big, heavy conversations and they can be fun at the same time. At least that shit is for me. <clears throat> that being said, today's guest, Ash Burnside, super pumped. So a little bit about Ash. She's a spiritual teacher, tarot card reader. I actually personally had a tarot card reading with her a couple of weeks ago, and it fucking blew my mind. Tarot is one of the last places that I have really dived into. I don't know that much about it. I do have a couple tarot decks. Like if you know me, you know I love my decks and my oracles. But I pulled a devil card one time by myself and I was like, "Mm, no, not gonna do this. But I was on Ash's podcast a couple of weeks ago uh, um, in the series she's doing called Unexpected Healers. And this is where her and I really vibed. She was not sold. She did not ever think of getting dressed and styling yourself as a way to really energetically awaken to who you are. I think if we are honest with ourselves, we all know that everything is energy. And when you put on an ugly sweater, you don't feel good. And when you put on that amazing sweater, you feel good. I think, though, that the society that we live in A lot of that shit and the pressure we put on ourselves has made getting dressed and quote unquote being stylish and fashionable has become like this evil thing when in turn it's not even about that. I want you to think of style as a synonym for self-expression and self-confidence and a way to communicate back to yourself your self-worth. Because when I feel super safe to self-express, I also feel my fucking best and I know my worth. And when I know my worth, I show up and I serve so much better. I serve myself so much better by holding boundaries. I serve my clients so much better by not being in my shit and not giving them my best selves. And then ultimately, my family gets the biggest, best pieces of me. So when her and I connected, she was like, holy shit, like I've been listening to your podcast. And I was like, there's something here. So when we had an amazing conversation on her podcast, she did a tarot reading for me, blew my fucking mind. It was so juicy. I literally think about it to this day as I'm recording this. I have one of the cards that we pulled from one of my own deck. Um, I have a Golden Girls tarot deck <laughs> um, sitting up as a reminder in the window of the claws as I record this, as I do everything. And I was like, you need to come on my show and we need to do this because it's this beautiful space that we got to go really, really deep on how to self-express, how to move through soul-opening life transitions. So she really is creating this beautiful space where women can show up and be supported through 
the way she reads tarot is a way I've never done it. Like where most people, they're like, here's your three cards and pick a card, any card. And they kind of just tell you something you want to know. I just was asking her question after question and she was really using the deck to feel into it and tell me like exactly what I needed to know because ultimately my energy was telling the cards what to tell back. So it's really beautiful. So she really uses that space to help women move through these soul opening experiences that they go through in their lives, right? So whether we're recovering from something big and traumatic, we're on a healing journey, we're remembering who we are, we're awakening from something, which I feel like I've gone through all of these in the last two years, if you've been following along on my journey, starting the podcast, losing my job after 11 years and the pandemic, to remembering who the fuck I was, what I originally wanted to do with my life when I chose to go to college 20 years ago for fashion and coming back to that. So this conversation is really dope because this is exactly the point, the inflection point when women are like, Katie, I want to work with you. I am ready. They're always at this precipice in their soul opening journey where they're up leveling in their business, they're starting a new job, or they're getting ready to get promoted for a new job. They're doing a scary photo shoot or coming out of the other side of a divorce and reinventing themselves, reclaiming themselves. Maybe they've just had a kid. And they're starting to remember like, okay, well, who am I now? Because I'm never going to be the same woman I was pre-kid, pre-divorce, pre-new job, pre-business. We're always growing. We're always learning. And what I've learned along the way is that our clothes have to grow with us because we carry so many memories, right? So many memories. So we go deep into that. And she kind of, not kind of, (laughs) she talks about how to navigate those soul opening journeys, how to tap into self-expression energetically, how to feel comfortable doing that. And we go really deep. We also have a lot of fun at the end of the conversation. And we, because she's also obsessed with astrology, which I believe is where her journey really began and myself included. And we go through the signs In a little like rapid fire quiz, I throw out some trends that we're going to see this fall. And she tells me who is going to be more likely to wear them. But I'm going to give you a big aha. This is not dress for your sun sign astrology as you know it. I told you we went deep and we had fun. So Ash challenges everyone listening to the show to look up their rising sign, their Lilith sign, which I didn't even know existed, and your Venus sign. So it was magical and it was beautiful. And like I was literally looking up my archetypes and my signs as we were doing the podcast. And it was super, super fun. If you don't know those, she talks about where you can find them. And at the end of the day, what I really love about astrology and tarot, especially astrology from my point of view, because that's where I have the most experience, is I love a good personality test and I love astrology. Anything that can kind of give me a framework within to navigate and really try to understand who I am. It doesn't mean I have to like truly like believe or resonate with every single piece of my astrology chart or my personality quiz results. But what I find is a lot of time it helps me unlock a piece of me. It helps me be like, oh yeah, I do feel like that. That really resonates. And then I build a little bit of confidence. Then it taps into maybe what lipstick color I'm going to wear that day or what shoes I want to wear that day, which then taps into how fucking I'm going to show up. Am I going to have really good energy on this podcast? Am I going to be able to do something really cool and create new stuff for everyone that's listening or not? So I highly advise you to just tune in, stay curious. And if you're ready to have fun and you're ready to like continue to explore the age-old question of who am I, today's episode is definitely for you. But before I let you go, I need to know, do you walk into your closet every morning and full of clothes thinking, I have nothing to fucking wear today? Ugh. I know I've been there so many times and I do it myself, but I wanted to let you ladies know that I do have amazing fall packages available for shopping your closet. 
Imagine an entire wardrobe co-creation, me and you, without spending a dollar on new clothes. You have amazing clothes in your closet. You probably just don't have the time, the energy, or maybe even the confidence to put them to work for you. The magical thing when we buy clothes is that there's usually so many different ways to wear them. We just have to spend a little bit of time and energy creating and understanding what that really is. So in my experience, what I found is when I co-create and show up with my clients, two heads are better than one and those creative juices really get flowing. So ladies, if you're ready to recreate your closet this fall without spending a dollar on new clothes and really, really maximizing the amazing things that you already have, hit me up and we can see if it's a good fit. Katie Allen, that's not my website. <laughs> my web hit me up on my website, katiejuststyled.com backslash contact and book your discovery call today to see if it's a good fit. So if you're ready to build all that confidence and feel good in your body now, head over there. I can't wait to chat. All right, lady. I will see you on the other side. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, lady, and welcome back to the Styled for Life podcast. Today is a super, super juicy episode, and I cannot wait to jump right in. So I have with me my friend, Ash. She's a psycho-spiritual coach, tarot reading life coach that refuses to let women forget the magic that's hidden deep within inside them. And I can, I just have the chills. I can personally vouch for this because we just did a tarot reading like a week ago, two weeks ago, and then literally fucking think about it every single day. Like, I'm, I'm like, okay, so this isn't my, like my mental boundaries are up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Every day I'm putting my mental boundaries up. So thank you so much for being on the show. I am so excited to dive into all of this fancy stuff with you today. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. And what you guys don't know on the back end is I just made her go through all my tech troubleshooting because I was like, Ash is fun and I got some new shit I'm trying to figure out. (laughs) So our goal today, so we connected We've actually known each other for a while through a mutual friend, and we connected uh, on your podcast, and we talked about unexpected healings and how style can really do that for you. And that was amazing. And I was like, oh my God, come on my podcast. And I really want to talk about the work that you do, how you can help women like deep dive deep inside of them. And because I think my favorite, uh, not I think, I know my favorite part about styling is really tapping into like how we feel. How do we want to feel in self-expression as the highest form of like self-worth? When you think about building self-confidence, to me, it means that I feel so confident that I will wear whatever I want to wear, wherever I want to wear it, whether it's the bus stop, the grocery store, a cocktail party, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I want you to help me help the ladies listening to the show or the guys Mm -hmm. listening to the show kind of grasp onto this like how can they start to define it define it for themselves based on the work you do Ooh, ooh! immediately I thought of a quote like as you were talking I was like oh this is relevant um I have no idea who said it and I might slightly butcher it so sorry in advance um but it is that confidence isn't walking into a room and knowing that they're going to like you it is confidence is walking into a room and being fine if they don't ugh. and like if that is not just like what style is and like embodying your own energy, like, yes, no, it doesn't matter who likes you. If you don't like you, none of it matters. What's it all for? Oh, that's so good. And that's so true. And then that made me think of something that's really been coming up for me. Cause we are going to talk a little bit about fall trends because how can we not? Cause we not? September and it's September is fashion month. But as I've been thinking about that a lot and I was thinking about like, oh, what trends can we talk about after we help people kind of like frame up and think about how using astrology or tarot can help them like self-expression their style. I was like, a lot of people say to me, well, I don't want to be trendy. Mm -hmm. I understand that completely. But I think and what you just said really hit home for me. It's really around being relevant 
and feeling good in our own bodies and whatever relevant means to you. The reason I love to know the trends is because when I step into Target, it doesn't even have to be like Saks Fifth Avenue. When I step into Target, I know what to expect. I know what pieces are going to work for me. I know like it's immediately, I'm not going to be shocked by the styles. I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm not going to be Um, any of those feelings about myself come up and to me, that's confidence. It's like when I know something and I've mastered a skill, even slightly, it helps me feel better. And my husband tells me that all the time about tech stuff. (laughs) He was like, if you just knew how to do it, you'd feel more confident. (laughs) Like I don't want to, but in all fairness, that's something that we have to deal with every day. And so is getting dressed. So while you don't want to be trendy, it helps build your confidence and just know what to expect sometimes. Yeah. I think the other thing too, is that like, at least for me, like before interacting in your world, the idea of like styling, clothing, being trendy, fashionable, like those are all interchangeable terms. And the more that like, I have been listening to what you're saying and the more that I'm, it's like starting to really land. I'm like, Oh, there's a difference between all these terms. Wait a second, wait a second. So like there's fashions, there's trends and then there's style. And I think like the essence of what we're talking about here is style. And that is such a deeply personal thing. Like style is energy. You Mm -hmm. have a unique energy. You're not expected to show up with a specific fashion or to nail a specific trend. You're expected to embody it in the way that only you can embody it. And like, that's the difference here. Like, so I hope that that helps somebody because that was my recent epiphany of like listening to yourself. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, I understand now. Uh, oh, you said that so much better than me. That was amazing. That was it. It's like, how can you embody that for you? Like, yes, if we say blue is going to be popular this season, you're going to go to the store and chances are it's going to be one of the only colors you can find. Like, how does it work for you? Like for me, it might be a full blue outfit, but for you, it might just be a pair of earrings or a purse. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, good. So thank you for that. So I love where this is going. So then how can we use some of the work that you do to like dig deep and really learn more about ourselves so that we can self-express or lay that foundation for, well, what is my style? How do I get there? I mean, to me, that's the funnest part of working with people is helping them reclaim that sense of identity. Oh, this is such a good question. It's also a really big question. So (laughs) break it down. Take Um, it back. So there's kind of two different facets in the work that I do where I see this kind of coming to life. Um, number one is obviously in the tarot. This is my number one tool that I use. Um, I use tarot less as a divinatory. I'm not like predicting your future. I'm not using some sort of like, I'm psychic. Um, if that's your jam, I'm not hating on it. It's my jam too. Sometimes, um, it's just not the work that I do with people. I use it in a, again, like psycho spiritual lens of understanding that like, there's, there's something so much bigger and expansive and mysterious about the psyche that like, we truly don't understand all the facets. And to me, I'm like, then what is the difference between the psyche and our soul? What is the difference between, you know, this bigger collective unconsciousness and this idea of like us all being interconnected? Um, To me, that's all kind of related. It's it's this realm that's kind of like related to science, but like just out of the reach of science because it's something that we can't quite quantify or explain. And like, just because we can't doesn't mean that it's not nourishing and incredible and magical into our everyday lives. So Tarot is, um, as a tool in this aspect, is a way for us to dig into the psyche, the soul, and understand like what's going on underneath all of the chatter, underneath all of the conscious awareness that you have. Because like that's what stops us is like the ego being like, here's what I think the problem is. And like that's never what the problem is. That's just like a tricky little way that your mind's like, this carrot over here, pay attention to this thing. Don't look at, don't look deeper over here. I don't want to think about those things. That's the painful part. Those are the shadows. I don't want to go there. And the tarot is a very immediate tool to be like, hey, would you look at that? Here's exactly the problem you're dealing with right now. No more hiding. We're going to talk about it right now. Um, Of course, it's a very gentle, like I'm not going to put you on the spot, any any sort of tarot reading somewhere like that. But that's really what we're doing. And using the tarot in that aspect, it just starts to create a gentleness and an intimacy and a self-awareness with yourself and within yourself that previously might have been unavailable. And to me, like this is the first step in any sort of journey and healing journey into understanding yourself deeper into like really starting to understand, like if you want to embody your energy, if you want to understand style, like this is where you start. You have to understand like, who are you? Who do you want to be? You can't know who you want to be unless you know who you are right now. Mm, That's amazing. That was so good. I was like, yeah, like my mind is blown. 
Oh, when, right when you were finishing up, something that really came to my mind is some of the questions I get in the, like the beginning of the transformational journey with my clients. And then the end always looks radically different. And they think they're going into it because they hate their clothes and they hate their closet. And then they come out and it's like, Oh, it's not that. And that's kind of like, which like when you were like, Oh, this carrot over here for me, that was yesterday. I was like, I should have put that post on social media. What am I doing? You know, I'm not good enough. And then like, I can't even calm down enough to like cook dinner or move to the next thing and be present. So that super resonates. So I don't even know my question. (laughs) I'm still spinning. (laughs) I'm still spinning with the aha of this. So short of pulling a tarot card live and doing this, how can someone start to do this like practice on their own at Mm -hmm. home? Like they're listening and they want one easy tip or something right now before they book with you. Mm -hmm. They want to start dabbling or maybe they have a deck and they're like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to bring this all back together. Yeah. I would say I like to start with something called soul soul openers. I actually did a live on this today. So Mm -hmm. I think that there's five different types of soul openers. It's totally like my own concept of pulling a bunch of different things apart. Um, So soul openers are things that kind of trigger us to go inward and to start doing some digging. It's it's things that create dissonance inside of us to the point that like it becomes painful and we go inward to be like, where is this coming from? I need to find the source of the pain and like pull out the thorn. So the five of them are see if I can remember these off the top of my head now. (laughs) Um, We have awakening, any sort of awakening. I don't care what kind of awakening. It can be a creative awakening, a spiritual awakening, a sexual awakening. I don't care. Any sort of awakening. That's a soul opener because you're starting to question. You're starting to kind of go within and like start to piece things together. Um, Any sort of healing journey. Healing is beautiful and it's intentional. It's also painful as shit. It's sometimes. So healing is 100% a soul opener. Um, Recovery. This again. Any sort of recovery, burnout recovery, addiction recovery, mental health recovery. If you resonate with the term recovery, it belongs to you. This is a soul opener. Um, The other one, let's see, number four is, hold on, we got those different ones. I'm trying to remember number four. I like awakening. (laughs) Awakenings, yeah. Um, There's remembering. Remembering is the other one. Remembering, you might even be able to say that, like, this is technically part of, you know, a journey or it's part of awakening, but for me, like remembering is very personal because I started remembering before I started my healing journey. And it was the remembering that triggered the healing journey and triggered my spiritual awakening. So remembering is anything. And this can be intentional, like you're intentionally remembering and kind of doing digging on your own. Or it is like like a PTSD sort of moment. Um, anything that forces you to sit with something and to really reconsider like how that played out for you. Remembering is is a soul opener. Um, And then the last one that we have finally came to me is expansion. So expansion is awesome. Like joy, growth, wonderful things. Things are going well. However, well, expansion can feel just as uncomfortable as failure. And so when expansion is like, you know, pulling us up, it's also exposing all of those old unhealed wounds that we haven't given attention to before. So those are five different soul openers. A lot of times what I see is that people experience them kind of overlapping or simultaneously. You might have like, you might have gotten one. You're like, oh, that's the one. And I said, oh, you're like, oh, wait, that's the one. Like you probably have a mixture of all of them. And that's totally, totally normal. So my first step that I would say is like figure out like which one of these soul openers are you really kind of vibing with is one that's speaking you and start to just reflect on it. And this can be in whatever fashion you want. If you want to talk it out loud into a voice memo. If you want to journal on it, if you have your own card deck, you can absolutely pull cards and ask questions about these soul openers. But those are things that are going to help to guide you inward and to guide you on that journey to kind of confronting yourself and getting to meet yourself again with that gentleness, with self-acceptance and starting to cultivate that awareness. Mm, That's such an amazing, beautiful um, answer. Because what I've really realized in my business is that most of the time, by when someone feels like they're really ready to work for me, they're going through a major life transition. Yes. So it's usually a divorce or a big upgrade. It doesn't always have to be a bad, bad thing. It could be yeah. like a big upgrade in their business or their kids are going to college or some major life moments where they've had that 
I don't know if it's a reawakening or a remembering or what, which one of those soul openers, but it's definitely a soul opening moment where you're like, who the fuck am I? And how do I get dressed every day? I don't know. And that's the part I really, really love is kind of, I don't want to say reinventing. I love the word reawaken. I have some reawakening that will be happening in October. We'll talk about that in another podcast, but like coming back to yourself. I love that so, so much. So from your perspective, someone's going through this and I'm no, you were talking about this in your stories a little bit today. So in your perspective, if someone's going through this, how do you think their style is plays a part in that? Is it just simply mm-hmm. getting dressed every day and asking them or has it, has it ever come up for you? Like I've talked to a lot of healers or coaches. Um, I know like a lot of personal trainers will do this. They'll say buy a really cute like workout outfit or a really fun color of a workout outfit and use that for the motivation to kind of, so you have this physical thing that you can ground into to like move through that journey. Have you had any experience with that? Does any bit magical come to your mind? Yeah, actually. Um, so I will start this off by saying that I think this is entirely individual and it depends on what soul opener you're dealing with right now. Um, or at least which one is, is front and center right now. Cause again, you might be experiencing many of them. Um, so before I started getting more into like the psycho spiritual realm, I was a burnout coach. And as a burnout coach, if that's your soul opener right now, then my thing to you is going to be like, just get dressed. Like if you got dressed today, good job. Like you're recovering, you're doing the things like amount of energy. And depending on where you are, if you're more in the beginning stages of that journey, like being able to just get dressed and get out of bed, like that's, that's where we're celebrating right now. If you are to a point where you're like, yes, let's dig in. Who am I ready to figure this out? That's where I would say, okay, now we have some different approaches to what this might look like. So I think, oh, how do I want to answer this? I feel like there's five answers in my head. So I'll <laughs> say the one that I've been really excited about. Um, this was more of an epiphany that I had, again, like sitting with some of the things that you've talked about and then just kind of like my own journey with style and um, what I'm starting to see in spaces around me and then my own clients is almost looking at getting dressed as kind of a meditative practice. Um, doesn't have to be like, you know, I, I do meditate every day. And as the end part of that meditation is what I recommend to everybody. If you're a meditator, um, the end part of that practice, like just when you, when you are done, you know, closing your eyes and being there, that's not the end of the practice. The end part of that is where you spend time in gratitude of yourself and your existence and somehow expressing that, mm-hmm. whether it is dancing to a song or preparing an outfit that you're going to feel really good in that embodies the energy that you really want. Like that's a meditative practice that is so healing. That's so incredible that like to use your words, like it's kind of reinventive in a, in a way. Um, and I love that. And I would a hundred percent recommend that to people. If that is, if that's where you're at and you're ready for that, like go for it. There's no one that's going to tell you like not to do that. And if they do, like don't listen to them. Oh, fuck them. No, I'm right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that you said that because before I came back to myself, before I remembered who I was, I've all the one thing that I always kept with me through kids, marriage, jobs, job loss, all of that was makeup. And makeup was my meditative practice. Like in my house, everybody knows, like my husband's not allowed to be in the bathroom when I'm doing my makeup. And then God forbid, it's a date night. Do not come upstairs because mama has the music on. I might have a beverage. It's a whole. <laughs> yes. like, and it just, it's always been like my thing. It was always, and I mean, I can do my makeup in 10 minutes or it can be an hour long process. Yeah. And it's, I always said it was like meditative and people are like, it sounds like a pain in the ass. I'm like, no, it's the one thing that I swear has always got me through. And it's, I can't believe I even forgot. This is such a defining moment in my life. The just get dressed. Um, Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, if I had to pick one moment in time where that journey really, the remembering of, oh yeah, like you went to fashion school 20 years ago. This is your true passion was when the pandemic hit. And one of my coaches was like, what was different about today? Like what was so hard about today? Cause the pandemic, we were like two months in. So it was like, what was so hard about today that that was different from last time I talked to you. And I said, I was like, well, I didn't get, I didn't take a shower and I didn't get dressed. She's like, okay, so tomorrow you get dressed. Mm-hmm. It was like, 
Oh, shit. And that was months before I lost my job. And that was months before I was like, oh, my God, I know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. There's something so magical and powerful in that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Oh. So now that I'm all doped up on the oh, feeling good and having <laughs> deep energy, my two favorite things to do is I get real into those like the psyche, the spirituality of it, the energetics of it. And then like, just dig into like, okay, so like what is going on in fashion and style? So I'd love to play a game with you. I feel open. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Maybe you can segue us better than I can into, so we talked about tarot, but there's this other piece. And I feel like this comes up a lot and I've always wanted to do it. I never have. And this is part of the reason I really want to connect with you is astrology signs. And everyone's like, oh, if, and I love every time on social media, like if someone's like, the are the shoes, which if you're an Aquarius, you should wear this. If you're, yes. you should wear this, or it could be shoes. It could be cake. It could be like, how you date it could be anything (laughs) and i'm always here for the astrology signs and what i should be doing with it to see if i resonate with it or not so i would love to have some fun with some of the fall trends that are coming up yeah what astrology signs um can play in those but oh my gosh do you have some fun words to take us i do i do i have the perfect segue oh my gosh so (laughs) All right, there's two sides of this. I'm telling you there's two sides of this, so I don't forget that there's another side of this. So um, number one, astrology is so incredible. Like I love using astrology in my work. Not that I'm like this professional astrologer because that shit is hella hard. Like it takes literal decades to be able to master astrology and to be able to look at like the current map of the stars and understand here's exactly what's happening. I don't know how to do that. I'm not claiming I know how to do that. However, what I do know is the archetypes of the stars, is the archetypes and the power of the mythology and the story that is residing in all of these different um, symbols, basically, that that astrology gives us. And so one of the things that I think is so powerful about studying this and studying your own birth chart is the ability, talking about coming back to yourself, to tap into your natural rhythms and to start becoming aware of what those are. Your birth chart is literally a blueprint for your natural rhythms. And that is the lens that I look at astrology with. And so that is what I would offer up here is to, instead of looking at like, you know, I'm a sun sign this, I'm a, you know, I'm a moon sign this, like, okay, well, what does that mean for you? Like, what does that mean as far as like the patterns that you experience in your life on a day to day, week to week, month to month, year over year, five, seven, 10, 20 year cycles? What do those look like for you? Because they're going to be very individual from other people. And um, actually kind of coming back to a burnout or journey, like wherever you're at, if you are feeling like any sort of disorientation and not knowing where to start using astrology and like, just pick, pick one sign, pick one, pick one thing. It can be your sun sign if you want. Moon sign is the one that I always recommend. Like if you're really disoriented right now, sun signs like, or the sun, I guess, sun cycles are 24 hours, like really fast patterns. If that is overwhelming and burning you out, like start with the moon, 29 and a half day cycles, a lot easier to work with and just kind of see where you're vibing that out. So that's the first side of this. So astrology is powerful because again, the stories, the archetypes and the patterns, the ability to invite you to figure out your own patterns. That's the first part. The second part of this is you are more than your sun sign. Everyone gets stuck on that. So like if you've ever seen an astrology thing where you're like, you know, like what you're saying, like Aquarius should wear these shoes. Virgo should wear these shoes. Like that's so sun sign astrology. And like, ugh, I'm so over sun sign astrology. If that works for you, great. Again, I don't want to hate on you if you love that. Um, however, I would like to offer some alternative medicine for anyone listening. So you have, again, an entire birth chart. Every single planet in our solar system represents something for you and you have a position. So like we'll say, um, I don't know how to describe this without going absolute full nerd and like overtaking the rest of this. So I'm trying to like, right, how do I... no, I'm here for it. <laughs> so your sun sign basically is your, is your lens that you view the world through. It's your perspective. So the idea of like dressing for the glasses that you have on is a little weird to me. I'm like, why, why would I do that? Um, your moon sign is your emotional world. Your rising sign, if you're going to dress for any sign, dress for your rising sign. Your rising sign is your true persona. This is your actual personality. So again, depending on where you are in your journey, if you are you know, feeling more embodied, you feel more in touch with yourself, if you're farther on that journey, you're probably going to resonate more with your rising sign. So 
if you, um, if you haven't pulled your birth chart, like please pull your birth chart. That's the only way to know what your rising sign is and all of your other planets. Um, but you have other ones. So you have a Mars sign, you have a Venus sign, you have a Mercury sign. These are all like, um, they call these the inner interpersonal planets. Cause these are like how I express myself in close relationships. Like I'm speaking to you right now as a Libra Venus, because Venus rules our style, our beauty and our ability to, um, our ability in relationships, our ability to communicate in relationships. So like I'm communicating to you as a Libra Venus because that's my Venus sign. Um, but then you have, let's see, you have Jupiter and Saturn. These are your social planets is how you show up in social settings. And then you have your external planets. So these are the, the outer ring ones. So Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, those are outer ones. Um, a lot of people will have those the same because a lot of them are either peer groups or generational. Um, so like every millennial everywhere has Pluto and Scorpio because that's a generational sign. Um, so that was a really fast breakdown for me to not go into like a 20 minute side tangent. Um, oh, this is so juicy. I'm like freaking out. I'm like taking notes. I'm like, yes. oh, I so wish before, I had my chart up. <laughs> before we get to like you asking me like the game things, there's three things that I wanted to like point out of when you're listening to this, like how to dress for these. When we're going through these and we're like, oh, Aquarius, so where's this or this, this, this. There's three signs I want you to keep in mind that are not your sun signs. When you're listening, don't listen for your sun sign. Listen for your rising sign. Again, this is your true persona. Mm. Listen for your Venus sign. And then if you really want to show up as a baddie, you show up as your Lilith sign. Oh. Your Lilith is considered actually an asteroid placement. Um, but this one represents like the more repressed but edgier parts of yourself. So like you want to be a badass, dress for your Lilith sign. So there's the three signs I want you to listen for. That was the second half. Okay, hold on. I'm taking notes because <laughs> I have, uh, like I said, a lot of women I work with are going through big transitions. And when yeah. we're going through big transitions, we pull in that badass energy. We want, we need that big girl energy. So I'm like, how do I find out? And everyone else might be thinking this. How, first of all, where can we just get our basic charts? If you have any insight to that, and is Lilith in there? Because I don't think I know my Lilith sign. I know my rising, which I have to tell you before we start, <laughs> and my Venus. <laughs> yes. yes. So to pull your chart, there's two that I suggest. Um, number one is astro-style.com. They have really cute charts too. Like they just look very pretty and very um, not overwhelming. A lot of them give you way too much information. This yeah. one's very straightforward. I don't remember if that one gives you your Lilith sign or not. Um, the other way that you can calculate this is after you pull your birth chart. And if you want your Lilith sign, if it's not in the birth chart that you pull, um, cafe astrology surprisingly actually pulls really good charts as well. So you can, you can look up just your Lilith sign. It's the same information that you would for your birth chart. It'll just spit out your Lilith sign instead. Okay. So I have actually, cause I had to do it, um, pulled up my astro chart, astro dash charts, um, while you're talking to double check my Venus, because that's what I thought it was. I don't see Lilith in here. Like, obviously I'm not trying to like, look, look <laughs> while I'm recording, but hey, multitasking is definitely a pitfall of mine. Um, but I had to double check because this is so fucking juicy and I'm so glad that you took us. I love to go deep. It's one of my favorite things. It's what I really love. And what my real mission is with style is the depth of it, not the surface level version that, like you said, like fashion and trends. And yeah. I love going super deep and trends don't trigger me because we as humans create the trends. The trends are always created out of what's going on in our world. So thank you so much for taking us there. Um, so we're talking rising signs, Venus and Lilith. Now I am absolutely obsessed with that. But like I said, when I start working with someone, I always say, I make them take a little quiz, of course. And then I'm like, what are your three words? Like what are, and these three words are allowed to change. Like they can be your words this month. And then in six months, when you've remembered, we uh, reawakened, healed, whatever mm -hmm. that is for you, those words are allowed to change. Cause I do feel like we're pulling in the energy that we need in this moment, but I do get badass a lot. So mm -hmm. I, I'm so grateful that you brought up um, Lilith. Um, so super juicy. So Okay, I'm ready to play. Okay. <laughs> I guess yeah. it's playing anyway to me. But okay, so first, do you want me to tell you what mine are? Yeah, tell me yours. Okay, so 
my um you want my what did you say rising my rising's capricorn i know that one Ooh. um because i'm always like oh really <laughs> because so my son's aquarius which i feel like i'm always like that i've identified with because it's the only one i really know my uh rising is capricorn and then my uh venus is aquarius too Ooh, okay and my south node is aquarius too Hmm. I heard that meant that you were lazy. <laughs> if your sun sign and your oh, did I tell you this already? I think you did. Yes, if your sun <laughs> sign. Because now I'm like triggered by that. If your sun sign and your south isn't your south node, what you've already accomplished? It's yeah. It's what you came into this life with mastery over already. Yeah, and they were like, <laughs> if you had both, and this, and then I wonder. I'm like, they were like, oh, then you just came back for a good time, and then my human design is a four one, which is the bonus life, and I'm like, did I come back for a good time? <laughs> I have new version of what that means. <laughs> yes. yes. So a lot. So I have Aquarius as my Venus and Capricorn as my rising. Okay. So hopefully everyone's paused the episode to come back. So now they can listen to this. I, so I have some themes. I have some colors. I have just some like silhouette, silhouettes and just like styles. And I have some fabrics. And I would love mm. to just like throw them out and... Okay. You can talk about them for a few minutes. Yeah. Or who do you think fits which one? I'm going to need a whole new fucking sheet of paper. <laughs> I <need> <laughs> All right. Let's start with, let's start with colors. Cause I think I love colors and I'm right. talking about it a lot. And there's one that I think comes up a lot um, that feels really relevant right now that um, I think I have a love hate with. And I think a lot of people will too. Cause now we're getting to the point where a lot of the trends when we were younger are coming back and that's mm-hmm. triggering for some people. Um, Barbie core as a trend. Ooh, yes. Everything pink. So you have the new Barbie movie and it's, it could really be, it can be interpreted as almost like any shade of pink. Um, mm-hmm. but it's really that hyper pink, like Barbie pink. Yes. Yes. Immediately think of Libra. Like, this is Libra all over it. Libra is very like, she's the feminine sign. She's ruled by Venus. Venus is like femininity in itself. So like Barbie core femininity, like Libra. Absolutely. The other one that comes to mind though is Pisces. Um, Pisces is very dreamy and ethereal and almost idealistic. And that's kind of where I see like the Barbie core going. It's, it's after that. So I can see where this would vibe with Pisces as well. Ah, I love it. This is so fun. I could do this all day. Um, so the other color that's really popular that I'm so here for, that's not just a traditional fall color, is just like bright hued cobalt blue. Mm. Ooh, which one would I give this to? I'm gonna say a couple. Okay. So Gemini is coming up. Gemini is an air sign, but it's also a sign of duality. And I love that, like, I feel like Geminis can get away with doing so much. Like, Geminis, I feel like, can, is one of the signs that can really dress however the fuck they want. And so, like, I feel like they, like, if they decided, like, you know what? I can do it. Then, like, yeah, you probably could. <laughs> you probably could. Yeah. Um, Gemini, for one, Cancer. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon is, like, deep, you know, those deep feelings and colors. So, cobalt blue is, like, such a penetrating color. And that's what I think about with Cancer as well. Um, the other one that it might be is, man, this one might have four signs attached to it. Um, what was the other one I was going to say? Potentially Scorpio. Mm. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Pluto is like the underworld being a little taboo. Um, so I can see where that cobalt blue, depending on your feelings on it, I can see where it could go that way as well. And then I'm going to say Pisces again for this one. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. So again, we're like, we're talking about that, like deep, dreamy state and so i can see where cobalt would be associated with that as well yeah i like i think that i mean they all make sense based on your um how you interpret them and i think that's the beautiful part about it is it's just interpretation um what i think of blue and why i think it's really trending and maybe i could give you this context at the time is it's blue if the world had a favorite color it's blue right it's the color of air what we think air is it's the sky it's water um and those are all really big things that we need to live and to survive um and i think that's why i don't think blue's ever out of style but this like really bright infusion of it um it's like a happy color. It feels really calm and it feels really safe, especially considering what we're coming out of as a global society. 
That makes so much sense. I didn't even realize that those four signs, three of them are water signs and one's an air sign. Mm. So like, dive, see, done. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Then here, let's go. So another favorite color of mine that's going to be really popular, um, lavender. Ooh, Libra. 100%. <laughs> like, because it's that pastel-y, girly, feminine, yeah. like, ah, uh, yes. 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 So like, when I think of that, I always think of... Um, like the maiden energy. So a little bit more green, I'm not sure. And then when I think of like the Barbie core, to me, that feels like very bad, um, bad girl, kind of badass energy. I love that one. Yeah. Um, let's go to fabrics because these ones are super juicy this year. So, but let me talk about some themes. Let's talk about some overall themes and then they how they feed into some of these silhouettes. So a couple of big overall themes that you're going to see this year is something I'm super excited for is Alien Superstar. Oh, so, yes. Really excited about this. I, well, first, I love it because it just sounds fucking fun. And I think yeah. need a little fun in their lives. I was joking on my podcast last week and then with you. It's like, I have a nine-year-old daughter. So we've watched Zombies 3 like seven fucking million times. And the, this whole theme is like, so we've had zombies and we have werewolves and now they've introduced aliens, right? So the whole alien invasion, they come down and they're silver and cobalt blue, which is funny to me. And of course they're shiny mm -hmm. and all those things. But this trend is really around anything that shimmers and shines, sequins Ooh. and latex is going to be now, I don't think latex is being mainstream by any means but you're probably going to see a lot of celebrities or maybe some influencers and it's not like you're going to walk in Target and see it we're not going to see it at like run you know where we where we shop <laughs> um but just for fun for this where would you put like any version of that so alien superstar so sequins or latex or the big broad powerful shoulder mm, alien superstar like when you first said it, I was like Aquarius, Aquarius ah! does. So a couple reasons. Aquarius, number one, is kind of known as the alien of the Zodiac. Mm. Which, so like when you said alien, I was like, done. That's it. That's the one. Um, and it's not in like a mean way. So if you're an Aquarius, like don't take this as a condescending thing. I mean, alien in the sense that Aquarians tend to be, um, at least this aspect of it, tend to be um very oriented towards humanity as a whole and like being able to see patterns and themes and like genuinely want the greater good of humanity to progress to move forward to expand but also like slight aversion to like actual people like no thank you no thank you yes humanity no to people <laughs> yeah. um i feel like, that in my soul <laughs> you're like oh yeah that's me <laughs> so, alien superstar yes that yeah. moving everyone forward in a way that is like very expressive, humanitarianly expressive, but also like individual level, people will be like, what's going on? Like, you don't care. You're Aquarius. Yeah. And it's so funny because when I, when I first was like researching things, like the first person that popped in my mind was like Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And I was even thinking about the cover of her new album. And I was like, I don't know, for some reason, this kind of gives me alien superstar. And then you were like, oh, Aquarius. And I was like, oh, my Venus is Aquarius and all those other parts. So I was like, mm, makes sense. Sounds good. Beyonce, me. <laughs> alien superstar <laughs> <laughs> so good all right what about biker chic so all things mm -hmm. leather and like heavy duty leather will be trending this fall and like leather jackets everything so whether you want a leather bomber whether you want a leather moto whether you want a leather blazer um moto boots like all of that like Super trending this um, season. I'm really excited. I personally don't have a good leather jacket, so I'm very excited Ooh. to shop for one this fall. Who comes up for you for that? Okay, there's two. But the first one immediately was Scorpio because Scorpio is all about like the edginess. Don't care if you are here for it or not. Like Scorpio is the taboo. It's the hidden. It's the like, I'm going to do what I want and I don't care if it makes you uncomfortable. So Scorpio for sure is the first one. The other one that came to mind, though, was Sagittarius. So Sag Sagittarius mm -hmm. comes right after Scorpio. This is technically a fire sign. Um, the Sagittarians are very expansive. They're very experimental. Um, they're definitely like a fuck around and find out type of person. And like, I <laughs> guess, you know, like there would be the person be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to wear this jacket. So Sagittarius for that one, too. Uh, I like that. And we haven't had any for Sagittarius. Um so what about the femme fatale, the romance meets grunge, the lethal lady? Ooh, the lethal lady. So from a trends perspective, what I really see is like 
So like that, the pastels in general, so like the baby pastel pink meet ruffles meets kind of like mm. the choker and the Doc Martens and those moto boots that are going to have like the heavy buckles and things like that. Mm. Okay. Um, there's two that's coming up for this one as well. First one was Virgo, actually. Again. So Virgo is another very feminine sign. So femme fatale, absolutely. Feminine or Virgo is also considered a darker feminine sign. Some of these, I like to kind of give them either day or night energy. um, Because a lot of these are ruled by, like, each planet is usually ruling over two signs. So Virgo is ruled by Mercury, but Mercury also rules Gemini. So like Gemini is the day or masculine version. Virgo is the night or feminine version. And so like, this is where it's like, got that darkness to it. Mm-hmm. So feminine darkness, like femme fatale. Yes. Virgo for sure. Uh-huh. Um, the other one that comes up is Sagittarius again, because like, again, like they're a little bit chaotic and, and like everyone loves that about them. They can, they can kind of I don't want to call them chameleons because they're not changing who they are. It's just like who they are can kind of be who they want to be. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, So now I just have what's left on my list are just like, I have a bunch of like just pieces. So like a type of a shoe or a type of a corset or things like that. So I feel like we maybe we can just do it like, um, what's the word? Like lightning round. All right. Bring it. All right. Ballet flats. Ooh. Libra. Mini skirts. Scorpio. Maxi skirts. Maxi skirts. Taurus. I don't think we have anything for Taurus yet. Knit blazers. So we have this whole thing with oversized blazers, and they still might be a little oversized, but they're actually be nipped in so we can see our waist. Mm, Capricorn. Uh, blazer season. Mm-hmm. Pinstripes. Pinstripes. Hmm. Pinstripes. Vertical or horizontal? Or does it not matter? Um, I don't think it matters. I mean, I'm immediately thinking vertical because they make you look taller, slimmer, faster, better, stronger. But <laughs> I I was initially gonna say Capricorn, but I'm kind of leaning Aries because they're very like go, 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 aggressive in your face. Not in a bad way again, but like that's very Aries energy, very assertive. Get shit done. Yeah. Puddle pants. Puddle pants. Mm. Do you want me to describe them? <laughs> yes, please. So describe uh puddle pants are gonna be relaxed in them. So super relaxed. Um not necessarily wide leg, like straight leg, but relaxed and even like dragging on the floor a little bit. Mm. And everyone's yeah. freak it's the antithesis of skinny jeans, and everyone's freaking out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say Aquarius and Pisces for these ones. Mm -hmm. Aquarius is again like it's opposite of what people are doing and thinking, and Aquarius is all about that. Um, but I'm gonna say Pisces too because of like the flowy nature of it, and also like Pisces and Aquarius are technically at the end of the zodiacal year, they're kind of like they're the end of what was and kind of the start of the beginning of what's going to be. So they kind of are a fun little pair. So I'm gonna say both of those. I love that. My husband and I are Aquarius and Pisces. Denim corsets. Ooh, denim corsets. Dang, denim corsets. Hmm, who would I say is denim corsets? And I don't know if that's a Capricorn thing. I kind of want to say it's a Sagittarius thing because denim just feels very like it's got a playful nature to it. I feel like no yeah. matter what context denim is in, it's very playful. Yeah, uh, always, always. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, cropped jean jackets. Cropped jean jackets. Oh, that goes with the denim again. I don't want to say Sagittarius two in a row, though. Mm. Are we missing anybody? Not that they just get this one. <laughs> just yeah, like, yeah, this is it. This is how you have to dress. This is it. <laughs> really ended this with the show. <laughs> um, cropped denim jackets. Hmm. I kind of want to say Aries again, just because like it feels very... Again, like assertive, like you have to have a sense of confidence, I feel, to pull off a denim jacket or the cropped ones where it's like, hello, this is it. This is what I'm wearing. And I like yeah, it. It's almost like a, oh, like, fuck you. I'm just going to cut the bottom off. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, last but not least, satin. Just satin as a fabric. Satin as a fabric. Hmm. 
trying to feel how I, even I feel about satin. So I'm trying to like pull apart my feelings about satin. No, because I was like, I think I already said last but not least, but now I forgot. I wanted to talk about satin. <laughs> satin. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say two. I'm going to say Scorpio and I'm going to say Cancer. Uh, I like, I can, I don't even know the signs and both of those feel super. You're like, yep, that tracks. Yeah. They're water signs. So they're very flowy, but they're, they're water signs that are very deep as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Pisces is deep too, but in a different way. So the, just because satin, I feel is very like you love it or hate it, which feels like a very Scorpio vibe. Yeah. Um, And then just like the very intuitive, like super flowy nature of satin as well. It's also like very moon sign cancerian energy yeah, I'm like uh, yeah i can totally see that when i think of cancer i don't know why well i know because memes i always think of tears <laughs> and if i had to wear satin i'd probably be crying and don't you cry on your satin because you will see it <laughs> <laughs> and for the record anyone that's listening like woo, satin is not forgiving so mm-hmm. I, my issue with it right now is it's everywhere mm-hmm. so just be on the lookout for that that was fun that was amazing do we miss? Oh, Leo. I don't think we hit. I just pulled up. I was like, do we miss anybody? I think we got everybody, but did we get any Leo? Leo. Latex? No. <laughs> hmm, I think they could if they wanted to. Sequins for sure. Sure. So they Sequins, can. Sequins, sparkly. Well, they can be an alien superstar with me because they can. that's my North Node anyway. And you want to be really shiny. So. Yeah. Very shiny. I think they could do pulled out blue too. Like anything that's very bold and look at me is a hundred percent Leo. There you go. So I think we got everyone, right? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, just don't want anyone to feel left out. Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. We nailed it. Well, you nailed it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was so fun. That was fun. Amazing. I know. I'm like, we need to do this like all the time. This is great. So this is my favorite place. Thank you so much for meeting me with the depth and the beginning of the conversation of like, how do we get there? How do we really get back in touch with ourselves and then following it up for playfulness? If I had to put my brands or my business or my core values, like that's it. Like I hate surface level conversations, but I also hate to be too serious. (laughs) I love to have fun, but I want to talk about deep shit. (laughs) Here for that. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for meeting me there. Before we part, do you have any last amazing words that you want to share with everybody before you pimp yourself out and tell them where they can find you? Because you absolutely need to do a reading with Ash because it like, like I said, changed my life. I still have my star tarot card up from my golden girls deck up here um, that I look at all the time to just go back to some of the things that we talked about. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Parting words. Trust yourself, damn it. Like (laughs) intuition is so powerful and you have it for a reason, especially because I know like this is, I mean, sure, there can be men that tune into the show, but primarily I'm assuming it's probably women and like women, you have intuition, like a woman's intuition. There's a reason why that is a phrase. Like you have a very specific way that you speak to yourself and that your soul and your psyche speaks to you. And that is through intuition. Like, please please for the love of everything good, like start trusting that more, start trusting yourself more, start creating more space for intuition to find you and for you to take action on that intuition. Mm, So juicy. I needed that reminder. Thank you. So where can everybody find you? How can they work with you? How can they get your magic? Yes. So number one place I hang out, I post pretty much daily is over on Instagram. My handle is Healing Hustle Co. So you can come over on there. Send me a DM. Say hi. I'm not a robot. I'm a real person. I love being able to talk to other real people. So come say hi. Let me know that you've heard the show. Um, I have a more of a landing page. I was going to call it a website, but let's be honest. It's a landing page right now. Um, <laughs> but it's just healinghustle.co. Um, there you can find my freebies um, and where to work with me. So right now I have something called a magical play date. So this is my tarot offer. This is my tarot readings that I do. They are incredible. I love doing them. I really don't think I've ever done a bad reading. I've been reading for seven years and really only two of them were like, that was weird. One was for my husband and he just asked a question he wasn't ready to hear. (laughs) So um, they're incredible. I would love to read for you. It's an honor to be able to read for anybody that has the courage to ask those deeper questions. Uh, Those are two places really. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out today. This was nothing short of magic. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you.